Also, we're going to have with us the money therapist. I love having Holly Signorelli on the show. Uh, she's uh, a genius when it comes to money. And we're actually going to talk about how much money is spent on Valentine's Day uh -huh. and on what and how some guys get themselves upside down financially trying to impress. And we'll get into that. i got to be honest, what a great gig this is. You know, I get to, uh, when, the, uh, when the mood strikes, I'm able to reach out and, and have people that I admire and respect as guests on the program. And they end up uh, becoming frequent guests. And I'm blessed to have a similar situation this morning. I just love this lady. She is so smart. Her name is Holly Signorelli. She's the money therapist. I highly recommend you check out her website, themoneytherapist.com. Holly, good morning. Hi, Neil. How's it going? Wonderful. Hey, listen, Ooh. before we get into the nuts and bolts of money, uh, are you allowed to take personal questions? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I want to ask you one. You, okay. just, you just recently made a very substantial move in your life. Yes, exciting times. <laughs> Business must be booming for you. Congratulations! Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's been amazing. I've um, I've really I just I love what doing what I do. It's amazing. I think the message is so important. You know, I just have watched people. I've just watched this country <laughs> deteriorate, and I'm like, you know what? Somebody's got to do something, and I'm tired of waiting for someone else to do it. Well, your book is doing amazingly well, and that must be part of the success. I, I'm just wondering, how do you work this out when you have uh, regular clients that depend on you, and now suddenly you've, you're moving to New York? Well, I actually sold my CPA firm. That was very time-consuming. So, of course, I'm still a CPA, and I have a handful of consulting clients, but I'm doing media pretty much full-time now. Yeah, and the financial planning side, yes, I just joined forces with Ensemble Financial. Oh. So, and just a longtime friend of mine. So I'm, I'm bringing all of my clients over here. And, yeah, we have a Park Avenue office. It's very exciting. La dee yeah. da. I hope you're going to put up you're going to put up some pictures. You haven't decorated yet, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's all like white and plain in there. And, you know, we're in the office with a bunch of attorneys, estate planners, litigators. So it's such a great fit. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm very, very happy for you. It's really been fun to watch your success. And uh, by the way, if you're not doing anything this evening, the visitation for my 401k is at 7 p.m. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> yeah, sounds like an exciting time. I, is, we're all in this together, right? Exactly. I, 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 I hope it turns around soon, or I'm going to wish I had pulled the plug on a bunch of stuff months ago. Yeah, yesterday wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't good. Any feeling for where we're headed today? I really think that we're going to recover. Um, we, we always do. It's just one of those things that as, as it continues to go up, it has these rocky times, and it's really a lot of it is, uh, I believe, emotion-based still. I know there's a lot of very real things going out there, but a lot of times people especially when people are retired, they just want to, you know, jump out of the market and they get really scared and, and they can't look at the big picture, which is why I normally talk about emotions before I talk about plans. And that's with anything. That's with getting out of credit card debt, building a business, whatever you're doing. The reason that a lot of these quote-unquote plans don't work for any kind of plan, like I was saying, anything, is because people have these emotional sabotage mechanisms in place that they're not even aware of so that's why they don't follow through no you mean you mean like you mean out of loyalty staying with a stock for example longer than you should or maybe the company you work for that type of thing oh uh, you no know, anything like for example people want to get out of debt and yet the country still continues to get in more and more debt even though last year we had had actually a really good economy. We still managed to get $68 billion more in debt just in 2015 alone. So, and, and, and this is with people making more money. And people are able to make their credit card payments. They're not, a lot of people are not struggling anymore. And so things have turned around. But yet 
people still have credit card debt. So there's a self-sabotage mechanism in place when people get out of debt that puts them back into it because it's become familiar to them. Well, I would and say... they don't even realize it. My, my question is, I mean, you said people aren't really struggling anymore. Perhaps they are, but maybe we're just adjusting to the new normal. Well, people do say that with credit card debt, that it's just acceptable. And interestingly, when I was on the way here in the plane, I was talking to um, somebody from Texas, and he was talking about how much debt that they're taking on there, because Texas is a very prosperous state, and yet they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars, and, you know, fixing streets and stuff, which may seem important, but it's like it, they justify everything, especially the government, with, okay, we, we have to make this investment, so this investment is based on debt. So that's a, an oxymoron right there. You know, you don't even realize it, Holly. I, I remember years and years ago, before he was a big national deal, I remember meeting and having a long conversation with Dave Ramsey. And he, he explained to me what, what credit does to you over time. You, you know, you're keeping your head above water. You're making the minimum payments. Everything's cool. Nobody's harassing you. Uh, but un, until you get out of debt, until you don't use plastic anymore. I mean, I have one just for emergency travel, for example. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that's about it. And we got rid of all of the debt. And you don't realize that how much money you can actually make and save if you're not sending out that stipend every month. Yeah, because it becomes like a bill. I mean, it is a bill, but it's like you be, it becomes, you know, it just becomes normal for you. And then you don't think about it until that payment's gone. And you're like, wow, now I can go do this, whatever I want to do with cash. Mm -hmm. Cash is, yeah. uh, Cap well, cash is king. And a lot of us spend a lot of cash this particular weekend with Valentine's Day coming up. How much do you spend on Valentine's Day, Miss Signorelli? You know, we are big fans of staying home for Valentine's because we like to do things for each other all throughout the year. And you don't have to spend a lot of money to do something nice for your significant other. So I'm a big fan of that because the last time a few years ago that we went out to eat, it was so congested. You get terrible service because, you know, the restaurants are just packed mm -hmm. and they have a limited menu. So I would tell people to go out on a different day. It's not a Sunday this year anyway, so it's like... Go out on Tuesday. You know? Yeah, no, you have a better experience. We've got a buzz question going here uh, right now. Thirty-eight percent of our listeners so far say that flowers, card, and candy is the typical uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, Thirty-eight percent say they don't celebrate it at all, and twenty-three percent, uh, like you and me, like to do something unique, and that uniqueness might be just staying home and cooking for Miss Baby. Yeah, we were just going to do steak and lobster, and, and I do love flowers. I think, you know, most people do, and it's nice to get those, um, and I'm, I probably will. <laughs> but I'm just not – I don't feel like with Christmas or Valentine's or any other holiday that I have to break my budget. I, I like to, you know, really think things through, like what is something thoughtful and unique that I can give somebody? And then, like I said, be able to do it throughout the year when you see something perfect and you're like, wow, I want to give that to my niece or I want to give that to my husband, you know, and you don't have to wait for a holiday for that to happen. Yeah, and after 34 years, Jeannie and I are kind of like, you know, you know I don't need flowers, right? And I said, yeah, I know, I know. She said, how about we get each other for Valentine's Day a new dishwasher? Does that mean we're not romantic anymore? No, we did that at Christmas because we both needed laptops. Like, both of our laptops were about to die mm -hmm. and were just out of date. And we went ahead at the Black Friday sales and we're like, okay, let's buy each other a laptop. <laughs> we didn't even, we did not um, do presents on Christmas Day, but we didn't need to. Yeah. It was, it was unimportant to us. We like doing a lot of charity during the holidays because there's so many people that really don't get to have any presents. And I'd rather do that kind of stuff and then just do something small with the family. Yeah. Don't go overboard necessarily. I would mention this. It's kind of sad, but this is the biggest, busiest weekend of the year for private yeah. investigators. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> because wow. any any... Any person, man or woman, who is being naughty will spend Valentine's Day with their spouse. But it's the day before ah. when, when, when people get caught. Yes. Oh, wow. Interesting. Creepy, isn't it? <laughs>
<laughs> yes, uh, people go out of their way. Huh? Yeah. Well, Holly, I know you have a plane to catch, but it's always an absolute blast talking to you, and I, I look forward to the next opportunity. Yes, we'll talk about uh, the millennials and the financial situation. There yes, next time. yes, yes, yes. This is something that has to be talked about. And my yes. guest is Holly Signorelli, the money therapist, brilliant young lady. Check out her website, themoneytherapist.com. You will love it. You will love her as much as I do. Holly, thanks. Have a nice trip and happy Valentine's Day. All right, you too. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.